I think we can all agree that there are some issues within the black community. Hell, there are issues in any community. However, I think even the most well-meaning people often point the finger in the wrong direction when trying to place the blame. If we really want to solve the issues in these communities, we need to be honest about who is responsible and stop putting the blame on the wrong people. We also need to stop peddling solutions that are, in the end, completely meaningless. That brings us to today's video where both of these problems are discussed by none other than Fisty Splinters. Hey everyone and welcome back. So we are gathered here today to debunk some bullshit from Bering's former love interest and professional virtue signaler Christy Winters. Here she's trying to make a case for why white people should feel guilty for the disadvantages facing the black community. I basically stated why I feel strongly about this issue in the preamble, so let's get into it. As an American on the left, one of the phrases that I have heard used, hurled at me when talking about issues of racial equality is the phrase white guilt. Well, what else would you call it when you feel guilty for every bad thing a white person has ever done to a black person, even though you had nothing to do with it? In the Wikipedia entry for white guilt, they actually cite a conservative black commentator, so let's have a look at what he has in his book describing the concept of white guilt. You know, I think we get the idea and this video is going to be long enough as it is, so let's just skip this bit. What's interesting about this Wikipedia entry is they actually quote a number of conservative writers on the concept of white guilt. Because we think it's bullshit that we should feel guilty for things that we never did just because we share the same skin pigmentation as the people that committed those acts. Not to mention, you never suggest any other ethnicity feel guilty for what their ancestors did, and you can find major atrocities that have been committed by every race on this planet. Uh, that is interesting to me because it shows, again, that white guilt is something talked about more on the conservative side of things than on the left. Okay, first off, the citation of a few conservatives on that page does not at all prove any word of that sentence to be true. Furthermore, assuming it is, the only reason it's talked about is the push from people like you to embrace white guilt as if it's going to do anything. However, there is one thing I should mention about this concept that might be relevant or at least insightful. Doubt it, but let's hear it. From the Wikipedia entry, Judith Katz, the author of the 1978 publication White Awareness Handbook for Anti-Racism Training, is critical of what she calls self-indulgent white guilt fixations. Her concerns about white guilt led her to move from black-white group encounters to all-white group encounters in her anti-racism training. She also avoided using non-white people to re-educate whites, she said, because she found this led whites to focus on getting acceptance and forgiveness rather than changing their own actions or beliefs. First off, what the hell is an anti-racism class? Is there some racist person out there thinking, oh, I just don't want to be racist, but I can't seem to stop. If only there was a class I could take. And this might be just me, but the way that paragraph reads to me is, having black people talk about the bad things white people did decades ago didn't make the white people feel guilty enough, so I removed the black people and had white people explain the bad things white people did decades ago, and now they feel extra guilty for being white. Do you seriously buy this shit? The only people attending those classes and actually feeling guilty for their skin color when they walk out are the people who already felt guilty for their skin color before they walked in. I think there are some valid notions of this concept of white guilt. Yep, she's gonna defend it. Certainly, when a white person who has been indoctrinated into an education system that has downplayed slavery... What the hell does that even mean? They described how barbaric slavery was when I was in school. Hell, we even watched the movie Amistad to show a visual of how barbaric it was. Now, I know not all schools show that movie, but how the hell do we downplay slavery? And downplayed white supremacy and how white supremacy was the sort of default position of the founders. Unless it's relevant to an event in history, that is not an issue we need to hammer down. We know people were like that back then, so what good is hammering it down harder going to do? It's not going to change what happened. And that's what we've been dealing with ever since moving forward. When you learn the truth about the history, the brutality of slavery, the suffering of black uh, people, the way that African Americans were treated once they got to this country as slaves, but then also their descendants who were sold off were not compensated in any way for any of the labor that they that was stolen. Yes, thank you for explaining how slavery works. And again, we know it was barbaric. No one is condoning it except for the parts of Africa and the Middle East where it still happens for the loss of lives, for the harm and suffering. They were just turned out uh, from the plantations into sharecroppers and just done, they just were put into another form of slavery. Yes, we can all agree that all of that was horrible and should never have happened. However, what the hell does that have to do with me feeling guilty for something that I never participated in? 
So in that way, um, I think white guilt as a concept is an interesting thing that needs to be explored if we want to actually get to racial equality. Again, I would like to know how feeling guilty for something you never contributed to is supposed to help with racial equality. And aside from that, what racial equality are you talking about? We have equal rights across the board for everyone in this country, so what more are we supposed to do? But when conservatives talk about white guilt, it's not to own that past or to figure out ways of reconciling our society with that past by reforming laws that came out of a, a white supremacist worldview. So, does that include repealing all gun control laws? Because I think you would be interested to know that those started from the KKK trying to prevent black people from owning weapons that would allow them to fight back against racist attacks. Rather, they try to shame white people, they try to guilt white people into not feeling guilty. They're not trying to guilt people into not feeling guilty. They're trying to explain how stupid it is that people like you expect us to feel guilty over something we never did and apologize to people who never experienced what you want us to feel guilty for doing to them. And just saying, oh, you know, I don't have, you know, enough white guilt to feel bad for this situation. Well, I don't, as I have no obligation or inclination to feel sorry about something I'm not responsible for. Here's an example, and that's obviously a comedy example, but here's an example of this stereotype of white guilt and also i think a stereotype of how white people react to white guilt from bill burr we're going to go ahead and watch this clip uninterrupted as it's needed for context to the second part of this response but it's funny so it's not a complete waste it's about three minutes long but if you don't want to watch it skip ahead to the timestamp on my sign i don't know i rented that movie uh pride recently have you guys seen that movie anybody see that it's about the first all black swim team and the difficulties they had to go through being the first all-black swim team. Let me ask you a question. How many of those white people are evil movies are they going to make? <laughs> it's like it's all the way down to swimming. <laughs> you know? I'm starting to run out of white guilt, you know? <laughs> no, it's like those movies. They started off unbelievable. Started off with roots, right? White guilt was at an all-time high. I could barely even watch it. I'm like, dude, I got it. My ancestors are evil, okay? Please. Please turn the channel, dude. Please turn the channel. They still hitting them? Fuck! Turn the channel. <laughs> This is going to be on all week? Jesus Christ, turn the channel. <laughs> then in the 80s, there was like a football movie. Then like Cuba Gooding wanted to be like a scuba diver. Remember that shit? <laughs> and now it's all the way down to swimming. And I got to admit, I don't think I give a fuck. <laughs> you know? I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's a recreational activity. Plus, I've been in pools. There's been black people in the pool, you know? I never saw any white guy like trying to like fucking like prevent people from getting into the pool. <laughs> it's like, are they just like making this shit up? I'm not, I'm not being a dick here either, okay? Just to clarify, you know, I just don't want anybody coming up to me after the show like, you know, I was thinking it, and then you fucking said it. And then... I'm not saying that I don't think black sh people should be allowed put on some speedos and go for a dip. I'm not saying that shit. I'm just saying these movies, like the characters aren't even believable. Like they always have to have like that, the, the over the top uninhibited white racist character, you know? You know that guy, he's a guy like, uh, he's supposed to represent all the white evil, you know? He's like the dude they always have like screaming during the movie trailer. They'd be like, they were the first all black swim team. Get out of the pool! He's got like a big vein in his forehead. He's just screaming shit, look, not even looking around, you know? Dude, it's ridiculous. Real racism is quiet. It's subtle. People look around first. To make sure the, you know, to make sure the coast is clear. There's disclaimers, like, dude, you know I'm not racist, but uh, these insert group name followed by up up conversation, right? That's how it goes down. It's not just some guy just standing up there. There's Negroes in the pool! Do you approve of this? Oh yeah, Christy tries to quote unquote debunk Bill's jokes with this news story about a black teen who was smacked around and thrown out of a public pool by some white bitch. I did check out the story through multiple sources and the kid did nothing wrong and it does seem like a legit racist attack. Therefore, I may reference in on a couple of points. The kind of white guilt that is constructive is the white guilt that sees the suffering of people and currently and in the past due to racist systems and racist attitudes and feels pain and discomfort um, looking at the suffering of others. 
That's called empathy, Christy, not guilt. I feel sorry for the teen at the pool. That was bullshit, and I'm glad justice was served for him. That is empathy. But why the fuck should I feel guilty for it just because I have the same skin color as the crazy bitch that instigated the attack? That makes no fucking sense. And that sense of, are you going to say, guilt or emotional connection? Oh, hey, Christy knows Liz and Zeph is a good basis for trying to transform attitudes and transform societies to remedy those problems, to remedy those structures, and to make our society more equal so that every American citizen feels like they are being treated equally under the law and by the state and by their fellow citizens. Feeling guilty for shit you didn't do or contribute to is not going to make any of those things happen. You want to make those a reality? Stop perpetuating the idea that cops spend their time looking for black people to shoot like it's a contest. Stop assuming that every inconvenience to a black person is due to some sort of racism. Stop claiming that all white people are responsible for the actions of one racist bitch in South Carolina. Stop convincing black people that the reason their economic status or situation sucks is because of white people. And stop trying to use the government to force things to get better in black areas when that literally does nothing but make things worse. There's many things we could do that would make things better for black Americans, but none of them are what you're advocating for, especially this white guilt bullshit. But the second form of white guilt that I see, that I don't see other people talking about, is also found in that Bill Burr clip. So jokes are white guilt now? Right? He doesn't want to look at it. He doesn't want to see white people oppressing people of color. For fuck's sake, Christy, if you're gonna examine jokes like this, at least do it correctly. The point of the bit, if there was a point to the bit at all, is that if you keep shoving this white guilt bullshit down our throats the way you want to, people are going to get sick of it and lose sympathy for those that were victims of racism in the past. And the not wanting to look at it line was in relation to not wanting to see a brutally realistic portrayal of the more barbaric practices used during slavery. And to be fair, some people can't stomach that. It's not something they should feel guilty for just because they're white, and it doesn't mean they want to just ignore the horrible things white people have done in the past. You act like it's either we have to acknowledge it 24-7 for the rest of eternity, or we don't want to acknowledge it at all. What's also interesting is the way that he identifies with the oppressors in these scenarios. Shut up! You fucking idiot. He doesn't identify with the oppressors, you humorless bulbous. Where in the hell did you come up with a bullshit idea like that? I'm pretty sure that line alone made me and my audience dumber just hearing it. I think this is a very powerful point about the perpetuation of the Confederacy and the South and the defense of white supremacy throughout American history. What are you going on about? He resents the fact that white men are shown as the oppressors. That is complete bullshit. You literally made that up. How the hell can you examine a comedy bit this much and get everything completely wrong? I thought you were a doctor, but I'm starting to wonder if you bought your doctorate from the same place as Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Showing Bill Burr systematic white oppression and supremacy and racist attitudes by white men in particular to any other group makes him feel a little bit dis of discomfort. Like, he, he doesn't like that. Why? Because that's the group he identifies with. He. Was. Telling. Jokes. Literally none of what you said is true. He was telling some jokes to make people laugh. Something you should try every now and then. How fucked in the head do you have to be to turn a joke about a racist movie character into the comedian being a white supremacist? Seriously, Christy, check yourself into a psych ward because whatever you have going on upstairs ain't healthy. As Americans, we are indoctrinated into feeling a sense of a requirement, a moral obligation, a sense of pride to dismiss and downplay slavery and exploitation and theft of Native American lands and everything else. That was done in order to build America up for white property men. Literally every word that just fell out of your mouth was complete and utter bullshit. Viewers, give me a show of hands as to how many of you feel obligated to downplay any of those events listed. None. We did some horrible and horrific shit to build the country. No one will deny that. And no one is downplaying it. The closest that we come to that is stating the obvious fact that it all happened in the past and there's literally nothing we can do to change it. The best we can do is to make sure that we do better than our ancestors and don't repeat the same mistakes. I don't know what else you want from us, but anything aside from what I just stated is setting your expectations so high that they will never be satisfied. This is a form of white guilt that is actually very noxious. It's when white people tie up their sense of identity with the slaveholders, with the founders who owned people and who were responsible for buying and selling human beings. 
What the f- uh, f- Did you just suggest that white guilt turns people into white supremacists that want slavery back? I'm seriously not sure if I'm exaggerating that analysis or not. We've been indoctrinated. We've been taught that our sense of national pride involves not talking about slavery, not acknowledging the suffering, to um, marginalize the way the government treated Native peoples or discriminated against uh, uh, Black Americans. I find it ironic that you're making these accusations about white people downplaying the mistakes we've made in our history, yet you've left out the fact that there were white Irish slaves back in the day, plus black slave owners, and the fact that black Africans sold other black Africans into slavery in the first place. Even if we were downplaying those events, I think it's more dishonest that you completely eliminate those events from your history to forward your white man bad narrative from even after the Civil War in terms of the Homestead Act, the GI Bill, lack of integration, keeping up segregation, all that kind of stuff. Who is making the claim that that stuff wasn't a horrific mistake? Seriously, who is making that claim? For some reason, we feel like talking about our history honestly is an attack on it. No, we don't. The only thing we keep saying, and something I'm sick of repeating as we go on, is that white people today should not have to feel guilty or atone for the sins that were committed in history. You act like we have to condone and support every single wrong thing that we did in our history in order to love this country, and I don't even have the words to express what a bullshit idea that is. And that's because talking about our history honestly is an attack on white supremacy. Impressive. Every word in that sentence was wrong. You have absolutely no idea how hard it was choosing where to put that clip. Anyway, that is not at all what happens. You're making all of this shit up and trying to tie it to white supremacy, and I'm honestly surprised you haven't pulled a muscle trying to do so. And when we finally get to a point, you know, when we're out of the school system maybe, or we run into people who have lived experiences that aren't the fairy tale that we were raised to believe about our founders and our country, no one is making our history out to be a fairy tale, we just aren't looking down on it with the disdain that you want us to. Also, if you keep making this claim that we downplay slavery, I'm gonna assume that you're only reading children's history books because that's the only explanation I can come up with for why you would think that. And I swear to God, if I have to explain to you why a children's book about American history leaves out the brutal events, you need to turn in that supposed doctorate you possess. At that point, as white people were so already emotionally invested in our goodness in how America is the best country in the world. It's not, there's a lot of great countries in the world. Hey, fuck you, America is and always will be the greatest country on earth. Get some! As a matter of fact, if we're gonna compare countries, you ought to look at some of the other countries that colonized North America because some of them killed more natives and did more harmful slave practices than we did. Not saying it was right, but if you're gonna discuss this subject, maybe stop acting like we're the only country that's guilty of those sins. But, we are so emotionally tied up in this sense of American identity without realizing how caught up our identity is with white supremacy. Um, guys, I think Christy just admitted to being a white supremacist, which by default makes me less of a racist than she is because literally no part of my identity as a proud and unapologetic American has anything to do with white supremacy. And because we feel attacked, some of us as white people feel attacked when the founders are criticized, we overcompensate by not only defending you know, the ideas the founders had, but defending the founders as, well, that was a different time period. And so we can't really judge them for owning and selling and buying other people. Just like I said earlier regarding being a proud American, you don't have to condone everything the Founding Fathers did to admire the vision they had for this great country. Furthermore, if you're going to keep bringing up slavery as something white people need to feel guilty for, are you going to tell the descendants of black slave owners to feel guilty that their ancestors owned slaves? Or are they exempt because they're black? For treating black people who try to escape for using dogs on them, for using torture, for selling off people's children, we have to use a different sense of morality for that? No. Christy, literally nobody is saying that. And I promise you, if you point me to one dumbass that is actually saying what you said just there, I will call that person a dumbass, just like I'm calling you a dumbass. No, we don't. We can call that horrific. We literally do call it horrific. No one condones slavery. You're trying to argue against an argument that does not exist. We can be disgusted by that. We can feel as morally churned up and uncomfortable and queasy about the system of slavery in America as when people visit Auschwitz or other places where there was mass 
murder and mass suffering imposed by one group of people on another group of people. Oh yes, everyone is going to Auschwitz and thinking that what happened there is horrific, but they're turning around to our history of slavery and thinking it was a cool idea that we should bring back. That's exactly how it's happening. And in both cases, we're talking about white supremacist men aided by white supremacist women. Holy shit, she actually acknowledged that women had a role in this. Now if we could just get her to admit that there were black slave owners as well as white slaves. In accomplishing that power structure and those ends. We need to be able to own this as Americans. We literally do. Stop acting like we don't just because we don't feel as bad about it as you do. I have enough stress in my life as it is and I would end up on anxiety medication if I felt as guilty as you do about shit that you cannot change. Because if we don't own the pain of our fellow Americans' history and how that racism and white supremacy has filtered everything done in our country in terms of legislation and how it has poisoned our government from decade to decade all the way down to us. Christy, white supremacy was almost dead until the media started amplifying the small voices that still believe in that bullshit in order to make it seem like it was a bigger problem than it actually is. Nobody had even heard about Richard Spencer until CNN gave him airtime to act like he was the spokesperson for all Trump supporters. If we don't see that, then we're just going to pass along all this white supremacy and racism and marginalization and oppressive structures to the next generation. If anything is going to cause the next generation to be racist, it's going to be all of you people who keep telling the white kids that they are responsible for what their ancestors did to the black kids, even though these kids had nothing to fucking do with it. So, I am talking about these issues, thinking about these issues, because I do want to be freed from being white. Well, I think Rachel Dolenzal knows a guy. Maybe she can hook you up. I want to understand the way that my American culture imposes this guilt upon me. Christy, you are the one imposing that guilt upon yourself. No one else is doing it. You can tell me to feel guilty all you want, but I'm ultimately the one who will make the decision as to whether or not I do. Same goes for you. This normative little view of America, where all of the bad things the founders did is downplayed, and all the great ideas they had are upheld as being almost like religious in their holiness. Because we can acknowledge that they had some horrible views back then while simultaneously praising the good views they had. Yes, we should acknowledge the bad parts of our history and the bad parts of their views, but you seem to believe that we should put 99% of the focus on every bad thing they ever did ever, and barely, if ever, talk about the good things they did. If we keep believing that fairy tale, we'll never actually get to a country where we have the ability for everyone to enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We literally already have that, Christy. Look at the NFL or the NBA where the athletes are majority black, or all of the successful black celebrities, politicians, business owners, etc. I mean, we had a black president for two terms for fuck's sake. How can you see all of that and still think that they don't have the right to the pursuit of happiness just the same as the white folks? And so as white people, this is why I want to have these conversations. Come again? White people, we need to talk about this so that we can fix it. Fix what? What the hell are we supposed to fix? Because we are best placed to identify these problems for other white people and describe them and help them see the same problems we do. Okay, first off, I may have heard that wrong, but it sounds like she just said that white people are better explaining these problems than black people, which I find kind of insulting to black people. And as far as you being in a better position to explain these problems to white people, you're doing a piss poor job of it because what you're talking about right now, this white guilt bullshit, is not an actual problem that needs solved. White people feeling guilty for shit that they never did is not going to solve anything. I have heard more actual problems from black people that I've spoken to than I've ever learned from any of you people. Problems like medical care in black communities and the quality of schools in the black communities. And as proven by the fact that schools in California elected to ban school suspensions instead of figuring out why the black kids were getting suspended more than the white kids, that's proof that you idiots don't know how to solve these problems. You just want to use the law to artificially make the problem go away, which doesn't actually make the problem go away. Because we all had, like I was going, I went back and I watched Schoolhouse Rock. Oh, I know you ain't about to talk shit about my childhood. And if you want to talk about a whitewashed version of history where it's white, male, and held up as heroes, go watch Schoolhouse Rock. It is not a whitewashed version of history, you guilty white nutcase. We live in a majority white country, therefore a majority of our history is going to feature white people. Nothing is going to change that. 
same as nothing is going to change any of the horrific events and mistakes of our nation's history. Every single country on this planet did something horrible to its people or some other nation's people at some point in history. And whereas we need to teach our new generations to ensure that history isn't repeated, we don't need to focus only on the bad and never the good. That will just depress everyone and cause everyone to see nothing but the bad in everything, something that is already a problem in the country as it is. Anyway, that is pretty much the end of her video, and fuck me, that was exhausting. Sorry this video was so long, but if you made it to this point, I thank y'all for watching. If you liked what I had to say, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to let my slaves know it's time for dinner. You can follow me on Twitter and bitshoot at hey underscore dude 77. Streamlabs link is in the description if you want to pay me them white privilege dollars I have yet to see, which, trust me, I really need them at this point. And I will catch y'all in the next one. Catch y'all later.